Hello friends, welcome to our channel. So in the previous session, we have seen the Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm and RSA algorithm and then we have seen uh, types of authentication functions. So here, so far we have seen two types of algorithms, but one is symmetric algorithms and asymmetric algorithms and also the exchange algorithm, key exchange algorithm. And now let us have a look on authentication algorithms. So as we have discussed in the previous session, there are three types of authentication functions. One is message encryption, other message authentication code and hash functions. So coming to the two categories, the second and the third one, the second type and the third type, we have to generate the fixed length value which acts as an authenticator. So coming to this message authentication code, we have to apply some message authentication functions along with the key on the plain text message which will produce the fixed length output. And this fixed length output will be appended to the plain text message and we will send it to the receiver. So similarly, similar to this uh, message authentication codes, the hash functions will also work. So the only difference between this message authentication code and hash functions is independent of key. So here also in the hash functions also, we are going to apply some hash functions on the plain text message. So without any you without any key, which produces the fixed length output. And here also we have to append this fixed length output to the plain text message and we have to send to the receiver. So at the receiver side, again the receiver will apply the same hash functions or message authentication functions which will produce or which will uh, again generates the fixed length value and this generated fixed length value and appended fixed length value will be get compared. So if both the generated and appended fixed length values are equal, that implies the, the message has been received from the perfect sender. That implies the sender is authenticated by the receiver. So and also the message has not been modified during the transmission. So that, that we call it as authentication and integrity. So here the question is, how to generate this fixed length value. So if you use this message authentication code, there is there are different algorithms to generate this uh, MAC message authentication code and coming to these hash functions, here also there are different algorithms to generate the hash code. Now in this session, let us have a look on one algorithm that is a hash algorithm which generates the hash code that is a fixed length value which is independent of key. So here we are not going to use any key and there is no encryption and there is no decryption. Just our aim is to generate the fixed length value by applying some functions on the plain text message. And we have to apply this fixed length value to the plain text message and send to the receiver. Now this algorithm is called as authentication algorithm which generates the fixed length value. So in this let us have a look on first algorithm which is uh, which depends on the hash functions secure hash algorithm so there are different variants in this secure hash algorithm which we can call it as sha sha algorithm secure hash algorithm there are different variants so depends upon the size of the output, we have to define this SHA algorithm. If the output is 128 bit, we call it as SHA1. If the output is 256 bit, we call it as SHA256. If the output is 512 bit, we will call it as SHA512. Now, so uh, the, uh, the complete implementation is same, but the only difference is the output of the algorithm. Now, let us have a look on this SHA512. So, 
as the name indicates our output is 5 volt so after applying this sha algorithm we, we will get 5 12 bit hash code so that means capital H stands for hash functions applying the hash functions on the plain text message we will get a small h that is a hash code which is 512 bit in this variant now let us look this sha 512 algorithm coming to this sha 512 so there are different steps involved in this sha algorithm first one so before going to the steps here the plain text is processed in terms of blocks so plain text block size for this sha 512 is 1024 bits so at a time we have to process 1024 bits of plain text next and here there are total number of rounds or we can call them as steps are so number of rounds or steps are 80 which are numbered from 0 to 79 and in each round in each round we will use a word we can call it as a q word a q word of 64 bit q word so this q word is generated from plain text and in each round we will use constant constant k and also in each round we will use buffers and these buffers are used to store intermediate results intermediate results and are also used to store output which is called as hash code so, so here the size of our hash code is 512 and each buffer size is 64 bit so 512 by 64 which gives 8 so 64 8 right sorry so total 8 buffers so hope you understood so each buffer size is 64 bit so how many buffers we require is 8 buffers So here the plain text is processed in blocks, number of blocks, and the blo each block size is 1024 bits, and number of rounds or steps are 80, and in each round or each step we will use a Q word which is represented as W, which is represented as W. So Q word which is a 64 bit that is generated from the plain text. So there is a process to generate the word for all the rounds. So each round 
there are we will use it each constant is constant which can be filled with a random number which is represented in a hexadecimal and also we will use buffers and these buffers are used to store the intermediate results and also to store the output that is hash code and each buffer size is 64 so here the output from the first block whatever the output we are getting from the first block will be given as input to the second block that means like uh, similar to uh, chaining mode chaining process so the output from the first block will be given as input to the second block and the output of the second block will be given to the output of third block the third block output will be given as input for the fourth block so till the end the same chain process will be continued and at the last block that means the output from the last block is our hash code for example there are six blocks of plain text is there and the first block will be given as input to the second block second block a output is given as input to the third block third block output is given to the input for the fourth block fourth block input is given to the fifth block fifth block input is given to the sixth block and the output from the sixth block is hash code so this is the chain process now hope you understood this summary now let us move on to the block diagram and what what is the function actually done in each round so let us see the steps so first step is we have to pad the bits so that the plain text message must be a multiple of 1024 so as we said that the plain text block i mean the plain text is processed in terms of blocks and each block size is 1024 bits so first step we have to pad the bits 1 followed by zeros so that length of plain text is c multiple of 1024 bits so hope you understood this and there is a constraint while padding the bits to the plain text message in the step one because here in the step two we have to represent the original plain text message in 128 bit append 128 bit representation of original that means before padding plain text such that the length should be equal to multiple of 1024 bits so after adding this 128 bit the length should be equal to 1024 so here we have to pad the bits so that the length of plain text should be 128 bits less than multiple of 1024 so hope you understood so adding both the step 1 and step 2 should be the result of multiple of 1024 so first we have to pad the bits so when we stop that must be 128 bit less than multiple of 1024 and this 128 bit will be appended in the second step so after the second step we need to get the length of plain text which is a multiple of 1024 in the third step 
initialize the buffers. So as we have said that there are eight buffers which are represented as A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. All these are the buffers, each of size 64 bit. So we have to initialize these buffers in hexadecimal format. Just like our initialization vector, we can uh, fill these uh, buffers using a random number that is initialization vector. We call it as an initialization vector and those must be in hexadecimal format. And the fourth one process each block of plain text in 80 rounds or steps we can call them as also steps so 80 rounds or steps and the fifth step last step is output in buffers so output which is stored in buffers is hash code which is of length 512 it's called as hash code which is a length of 512 so this is the complete steps involved in this sha 512 algorithm so as the output is 512 we call it as a 512 if it is 128 the buffers will be reduced and once again, I am repeating. First, we have to pad the bits that is 1 followed by zeros until the length is 128 bit less than a multiple of 1024. And in the second step, append the 128 bit representation of original plain text message to the first step. So the length must be equal to multiple of 1024. Now, the plain text is processed in multiple of 1024 bit blocks. In the third step, we have to initialize the buffers each of 64 bit in order to store the intermediate results or the output. And the fourth step, process each block of plain text in 80 rounds or steps. And the output of each block will be given as input to the next block. And last step, the output of output which is stored in buffers is a hash code. It's a fixed length output which is a hash code of length 51. So I hope you understood these all four steps, I mean five steps. Now let us see one by one. So let us first of all let us have a look on block diagram. So coming to this block diagram, so you can observe here. See. This is the plain text message which is of length L and we have to pad that with 1 followed by zeros and 128 bit representation. So all these together will get the multiple of 1024 bits. And here at a time the each block will be get processed and the block size is 1024 and this 1024 will be given as input to the function round function in this round function the input is initialization vector which we call it as a buffers and these buffers will be involved in this function and this buffers will be given as input to the second I mean the output of this function will be given as input to the second block the function the output of function in the second block so likewise we will continue for each and every block and the last block the output from the last block is the hash code so after processing all the blocks we will get the hash code so hope you understood this block diagram so don't get confused the first step is append the 1 0 0 0 1 followed by all the zeros that is padding the bits such that the length must be equal to 10 multiple of 1024 minus 128 
and in the next step we have to append this 128 bit such that now the length will be a multiple of 1024 now the process will be started now so after applying these two steps now we have to initialize the buffers so how to initialize the buffers so these buffers so these buffers are initialized using the hexadecimal and these buffers are represented as a b c d e f g h which of 64 bit in hexadecimal and now each block will be processed in number of rounds so what will be done in the round function see this is a process done in the round function so in this round function there are totally 80 steps or 80 rounds which are numbered from 0 to 79 and for each round what are the inputs one is the word which is which I call it as a Q word which is generated from the plain text in each round so W0 W1 and so on W79 and also the constant K0 K1 K2 and so on K79 so for each round so these are the buffers a b c d e f g h so there are three inputs for each and every round one is the eight buffers another one is the word which is generated from the plain text and the constant and the output will be given to the input for the next round so round one round two round three and also round 79 after completion of all the 79 rounds the initialization vector that means the data which is present in the buffers will be added with the output from the round 79 so here the plus indicates addition modulo 2 power 64 addition modulo 2 power 64 this is not an XOR operation that is addition modulo 2 power 64 so the, the initialization I mean initial values of buffers will be added with the output of round 79 and this value will be given as input to the next function next block so this is for complete one block and this output will be given as input to the second block that means so here the hi is this one h1 so this will be given as input to the function for the second block of plain text message likewise we have to continue all the all the plain text messages right so here the three functions are given as input to the round function all the eight buffers and the word and the constant here the constant will be in hexadecimal and the word size is 64 bit so how to generate this 1024 plain text message to 79 words I mean 80 words so for this there is a word generation so word 0 to word 16 which gives I mean word 0 to word 15 that is 16 words each word size is 64 so word size is 64 there are 16 words so there are 15 0 to 15 this implies so 1024 so the complete plain text will be processed as it is for the first 15 words so first 64 bits comes under w0 second 64 bits comes under w1 and so on the last 64 bits of plain text message will stored in w15 now the formula starts from w16 that means we have to generate from w16 to w79 so so how to generate the word for each round that means for 16 rounds we need not generate these words because we will just uh, access the plain text message as a words in the first 15 rounds so we have to generate from the 16th round so this is the formula to generate the word in each round so that is 
sigma 1 to phi 12 w of t minus 2 plus w of t minus 7 plus sigma 0 to phi 12 w of t minus 15 plus w t minus 16. So here what is meant by sigma 1 to phi 12? So consider the values from 1 to phi 12. Sigma 0 to phi 12 means ROTR. ROTR stands for circular right shift of the 64 bit argument x by n bits. So whatever we are using the buffer, we have to shift this buffer a circular right shift. We have to apply the circular right shift to this buffer to power or 1. Here 1 indicates 1 bit shift. In the second one there is an 8. So we have to circular right shift 8 bits. And in the third one SHR. This is called left shift operation of 7 bits. So this implies for, for sigma 0 to phi 12 sigma 0 to phi 12 the first term is rotate circular rotation I mean circular right shift of one bit of given word XOR with rota rotation of eight bits of the given word I mean rotation means circular right shift of given word XOR with left shift of seven bits of given word this gives sigma 0 to phi 12 so this one and here sigma 1 to phi 12 so there is another term called sigma 1 to phi 12 so sigma 1 to phi 12 means so left shift of 64 bit argument x by n bits with padding by zeros on the right left shift and by padding the bits 0 bits on right side so this one again rotation of 16 bits of a word x exhort with rotation of 61 bits of given word exhort with left shift of 9 bits of given word so like this formula by applying this formula we have to generate the words from 0 to I mean sorry 16 to 79 because we are using the plain text from word 0 to word 15 so we need to generate the word from word 16 to word 79 and we have to apply the same formula for all the words so here t is a round number here t is a round number here the starting number of t is from 16 to 79 right so and what about the constants as I have said that we have to apply the there are three functions one is buffers eight buffers which are in hexadecimal format and words which I have seen uh, have shown you the formula and now constants what about the constants so here the constants are Again, we have to use a total 80 constants for each and every round. So these are the constants which are represented in hexadecimal. So total 20 constants and 4 columns. So I mean 20 columns, 4 rows. So total we, we had, I mean 4 columns and 20 rows. That is total 80 constants are there. So this we can apply a random number generator. By using the random number generator, we can get the constant. So we have to use each constant in each round. So total 80 constants are there. And now what will be done on the buffers? So I have, uh, as I have said that there are totally 8 buffers. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Total 8 buffers of each 64 bit. So in each round we have to apply this formulas we have to apply these formulas so here we have to use a two variables t1 and t2 and in the t1 that is equal to h h is nothing but 
the hash code the initialization vector first one is initialization coming to the second block the output of first one is h h plus ch that is a conditional function of buffers e f g so here three buffers taking the input as three buffers to the conditional function and plus sigma 1 to 5 12 of buffer e so i will say that I, i will show that what is exactly the sigma and what exactly this conditional function and what exactly this majority function so plus wt the word which we are generating plus the constant that will be assigned to t1 and coming to the next one t2 sigma 0 to 5 12 of buffer a the content of buffer a plus majority function applied for three buffers a b c so here using two functions one is a conditional function and the majority function in the conditional function we are you i mean we are applying the inputs as e of g and for the majority function we are applying the functions a b and c so those are the logical functions which i will show you in the next one so and also two terms we have seen sigma 1 to 5 12 and sigma 0 to 5 12 now coming to the next one so sorry here h is not an uh, hash code sorry h is a buffer h this one the last buffer okay i'm sorry so as i have said that h is a previous uh, hash function sorry h is a buffer the content of buffer h see now assign the content of buffer g to buffer h assign the content of buffer f to buffer g assign the content of buffer e to buffer f and the content of d is added with the term t1 and assigned to buffer e and the content of buffer c is assigned to d the content of buffer b is assigned to buffer c the content of buffer a is assigned to buffer b and the terms the addition of two terms t1 and t2 will be assigned to buffer a and this formula is implemented in each and every round now let us see the conditional function majority function and these two functions so here the conditional function and majority functions are the logical functions the simple logical functions see this is the majority function and we are applying a b c as inputs to this majority function see here we can see the majority function of a b c we are applying a b c as input to the majority function which is a logical function so what is the majority function the content of buffer a is end buffer with content of buffer b XORed with b and c XORed with c and a apply the logical end operation so we know that how to perform the end operation right so if both the bits are true then only we can get the output as true if any one is false the output will be the false so apply the end function for all these buffers a and b XORed with b and c XORed with c and a that is the majority function coming to this conditional function so which we have seen ch ch of e f g the buffers e f and g so here here also we will use the and and not operations e and f xor with not e and j here the not operation means if there is zero it will be shifted as one the not a is i mean not zero is one not one is zero so e and f XOR with not E and G and again this one sigma 1 phi 12 of buffer E that is called rotation of E as I said that ROTR ROTR stands for circular right shift so circular right shift of 28 bits you can see here 28 bits of content E exorded with circular right shift of 34 bits of 
buffer E XOR with circular right shift of 29 bits of content of buffer E. So this will be the result of sigma 1 to 512 buffer E. And next sigma 0 to 512 of buffer A. The formula for that function is fluoridation of A. So here ROTR is circular right shift of 28 bits of content of buffer A exerted with rotation of 34 bits of content A exerted with rotation of 29 bits of, of buffer A. So this will be applied and these formulas will be calculated and assignment will be applied for all these buffers. So hope you understood this buffers and this will be implemented in each and every round. This will be implemented in each and every round. So the same formula is picturized so that we can get like this. So here you can see the content of A is stored in content of B, the buffer B and also the sigma plus addition with the majority function of ABC and addition of K1 will be applied and assigned to A. So the same function, the same formula is picturized so that we will get the diagram like this. So the complete one is buffers. Here A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H are buffers. So the length is 512 bit. So this is the output for each and every round. This is the output for each and every round. This will be given as input to the next round. This will be given as input to the next round. So round 1, round 2, round 3. Likewise, after the completion of round 79, the output will be added with the initial values of buffers and thus it will be coming the final output which is 512 bit, which is the input for the second process of plain text block. If there is only one block, this will be the hash code. If there are three blocks, this will be input for the first, second block and the second block will be processed the same way and the output will be given as input to the third block and the third block process will be in the same way and the output of the third block will be the hash code. That is a fixed length hash code. So hope you understood this. So this is not an encryption algorithm. This is an authentication algorithm. So here we are generating the fixed length output which we are appending to the plain text message and we are sending it to the receiver. So there is no question of encryption and decryption. Right? So once again I will say the steps. SHA-512. First we have to pad the plain text message with 1 followed by all zeros until the length is 128 bit less than multiple of 1024 because in the second step we are adding this 128 bit in the second step add the 128 bit representation of original plain text message that means before padding the plain text message before padding that 128 bit will be added such that the length must be equal to the multiple of 1024 now initialize the buffers a b c d e f g h so totally eight eight buffers are required each of size 64 bit and these buffers are initialized in hexadecimal and next process each block of plain text in 80 rounds or 80 steps and chain the process that means the output from each block will be given as input to the next block so that the final output in the buffers final block will be the hash code which is of 512 bit and in each round there are totally 80 rounds in each round there are three inputs, one is eight buffers, the content of eight buffers and the constant and the word which is of 64 bit. That is a Q, Q word. That is of 64 bit. So here also the complete plain text is divided into 16 Q words. So that is uh, represented as W0 to W15 and from the W16 we have to use a formula to generate the 64 bit word. And there are different constants we have seen total 80 constant which each constant is used in each step. So these are the constant. So you can use a random number generator which is a constant. 
so everything is represented in hexadecimal so as i have seen i have shown the formulas for uh, word generation of word and the uh, uh, formula for content expressions in the buffers so how the content is manipulated in the buffers so there we have seen two options that is a rotation and i mean circular right uh, left uh, right rotation and uh, left shift rotation and we have to apply the same formula in each and every round so the final output from the last round is xor with the initial value so that we will get the 512 bit output so don't get confused this is these are the authentication algorithms so so far we have seen the three types of algorithms one is the encryption algorithms in that encryption algorithms we have seen two more algorithm two more categories one is symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption so here the encryption algorithms is just conversion of plain text to cipher text and then we have seen the exchange algorithm key exchange algorithm that is how to exchange the secret key between sender and receiver in the symmetric encryption that is diffie hellman key exchange and now we have we have seen this secure hash algorithm which is an authentication algorithm so which uh, develops or generates the fixed length output which is appended to the plain text message and sent to the receiver so that the receiver will authenticate the sender so hope you understood this secure hash algorithm so let us stop here in the next session we will see one more uh, authentication algorithm and uh, if you are having any doubts regarding this sha algorithm or any other concepts in information security please feel free to post your doubts in the comment section so that definitely i will try to clarify your doubts so if you understood my videos like my videos and share my videos with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for listening thank you very much